So this video will show you how to draw a graph using a new version of Microsoft Excel on my MacBook. Uh, it should be fairly similar on your PC as well if you have a newer version. All right, so we're going to select the values we want to graph. So the main thing we're focusing on is these three averages. So I'm going to click and drag across and release. And then I'm going to go to charts and tell them that I want a column chart clustered columns and click on that. All right, and that gives us a graph that shows three means. So this is 1.6 for group A, 10.4 for group B, 9 for group C. All right, you can compare the means already. Uh, one problem is that the labels in the x-axis don't match the groups we want to name them. So what I'll do is I'll right click, okay, or two finger click if you're on a Mac, on the graph. And I'm gonna go down to select data. All right, so notice that the y-axis values are already chosen here, but I want to tell them what to label the x-axis with. So I'm going to click on category, x-axis labels. Right, I'm going to go up here and say, okay, I want the x-axis to say group A, group B, and group C. Right, and when I release, notice that it already labeled them properly, group A, group B, group C. So I like it, I will click OK. All right, so x-axis is nicely labeled. Um, next, I want to add some error bars, right? So if I click, on the bar once, you'll see that all three bars are selected, meaning that this is the series that are the set of data I want to add error bars to. And I'm actually going to right click it and go to format data series, meaning I'm going to mess with this series of data. All right, so I want to add error bars on the top and the bottom, so both. And I don't want it just to be this little line hanging off the end, I want to add a little horizontal cap on it as well. So I'll select that as well. And in terms of how big the error bars are, notice, notice these error bars are kind of crazy big. They don't, I don't know where they got those from. I'm actually going to tell them what I want the error bars to be. So I'll go to Custom and then Specify Values. Okay, so now I can tell them how big to make the top half and the bottom half of this error bar. So the top half, I'm just going to delete what's there, get rid of it, and tell them what I want. So I want to go and take this bottom row, these three values. So click and select those. Oh, sorry, one more time. So I have to fill in this box here. I want to click here drag across and select these three values and let go. All right, so that filled in this automatically for those three cells. And I'll do the same thing down here. Select that, delete it, get rid of it. And again, the bottom here is going to be the same size according to these three values again. And click OK. All right, and then click OK one more time. And you notice now the error bars look right, right? This error bar is bigger than this error bar. This error bar is bigger than this error bar. All right, so you'll notice that this error bar is quite big because if you look at the group C data, it kind of jumps all over the place from 12 down to 7 to 9 and 10. Right, so that makes this error bar bigger um, than the others. This one's quite consistently around 2, which is why it's smaller. So the way you interpret this is whenever the error bars overlap, like the bottom of this is lower than the top of this, then statistically speaking, these two averages are not different. Right, even though the means themselves are different, statistically speaking, these two groups, if you did it enough times, would still show it pretty much the same average, okay? Whereas if you find that the error bars do not overlap, like this one and this one, right, then you can say that they are statistically different, that 90, we're more than 95% sure that this average is actually bigger than this average, which is a great result because if this is our negative control and this is our extract, right, we can say that we're 95% sure at least that the average zone of inhibition size for group C is actually bigger than the average zone of, zone of inhibition size for group A for the negative control, meaning that our treatment actually does something. And is statistically similar to group B, to our positive control. That's, as far as we can tell, as effective as ampicillin. Okay, so hopefully that helps. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me anytime. Thanks, and I will see you in lab.